Finally, in this lecture, we are going to test whether our trading strategy is profitable or not. First of all, we have to make sure that whenever in the initialization block, as far as momentum strategy class is concerned, we consider the stocks. Of course, we have to make sure that we iterate through sales.stocks, so we refer to this variable. And after that, you have to download the data set at the last chapter of this course, and you can download every single stock related CSV file, and you can download two text files containing all the companies. So we have the companies file containing just the first 14 stocks in the S&P 500, and we have the S&P 500 index as well. And as far as companies all are concerned, this file is going to contain the symbol. So this is the ticker name for all the stocks present in S&P 500. Because of course in our trading strategy what we are going to do we are going to calculate the momentum which means that we consider every single stock in the S&P 500 index on a one by one basis. So we consider the stock with symbol MMM then AOS then ABT, ABBV, ACN and so on. We calculate the exponential regression in order to get momentum and then we are going to build our portfolio based on these values. And of course you can download the stock related information. So for example if we consider AOS, so let's search for AOS, we have AOS here and the file is going to contain the date, open price, high price, low price, closing price, adjusted closing price and the volume within the range 2010 up to 2020 I guess. Yeah, so the last trading day of 2019. So this is the data set we are going to handle. First of all, let's test the algorithm on a small data set. So with just 15 assets, the first one is GSPC stands for S&P 500 as the index. And then we consider 14 stocks within the S&P 500. First of all, we create an empty list data structure for the stocks. Then we instantiate Cerebro as usual. Then we open the file companies. So this is the companies file we are after. And we are going to get the sticker names on a one by one basis. Of course, we just have to iterate through the file in on a line by line basis. And just for demonstration purposes, let's print out the lines. So if I run the application, then of course we will get GSPC, we will get MMM, AOS, ABT, ABBV. Of course, we have to deal with the new line character. So if we use the strip and we remove the new line character, then of course we will get something like this without the new lines. Okay, so we are going to append the line strip new line. So we don't want to include the new line character into the stock list data structure. And then we would like to read it. So we use a try except we have a file not found error. And if we have a file not found error, which means that the given ticker is not present in our data set, because of course it may happen that the given ticker has been removed from the S&P 500 or something like this, we would like to path, which means that we don't want to handle that exception. Then we have to use the pandas related read CSV function. We have the ticker name, which is the line strip new line character. So we don't want to include the new line character. The index is going Going to be the column with index 0. So the dates are going to be the index. Of course, we can check whether the given data frame contains more item than 100. So we don't want to include data sets that are too small. So if the data set length, so the number of observations is greater than 100, then we can add the data to Cerebro. So we can transform the pandas data frame into a backtrader related feed as you can see. The data name is df, plot is equals to false, and this is how we can read the CSV file related data set and add the data set to Cerebro on a line by line basis. So what's going to happen? We will parse the file on a line by line basis, we download the data 
data GSPC, so S&P 500 index. Of course, we don't have to download it, sorry for that, because it is present in the GSPC file. This is a comma separated file with all the values we are after. And then we add this data to Cerebro. Then in the next iteration, we will consider the next company. We look for the CSV file and then we add the data set into Cerebro. Then the next one. Okay, so this is what we are going to do. By the way, as you can see, because in the file, the first one is S&P 500 index and all the others are the stocks present in S&P 500. This is why we have implemented our algorithm like this. As you can see, the data with index zero. So the first item we have added to Cerebro is the S&P 500 index. All the other data are the stocks related information. And of course, this is exactly what's happening here. We have the first company, we have the second company, third company, fourth company, and we keep adding it to Cerebro on a one by one basis with the help of add data function. Okay, then of course, we want to analyze our algorithm. We have already been talking about how to analyze the results. We have to add observer, we have to add analyzer, sharp ratio, we want to analyze yearly returns, we want to analyze drawdown down and we want to add the strategy momentum strategy so this is the class we have implemented we have momentum strategy which is a strategy so as you can see the parent class is a strategy so we are able to add the strategy to cerebro so this is this is how we add or attach the strategy we have implemented to Cerebro. Then we want to set our capital to $100,000 and we would like to set commissions 0.01. Again, you can check the documentation at backtrader.com. As you can see, you can use Cerebro Broker Set Commission. There are several parameters. We are dealing with the commission exclusively. The default value is 0.0, .0 and it is the monetary unit in absolute or percentage terms each action costs. So in the above example, it is 2.0 euros per contract for a buy and again 2.0 euros per contract for a sell operation. In this case, we are dealing with 1% or usually we have 0.05, but anyways, let's make it 1%. So commission fee is 1%. Okay, then we print out the initial capital, which is equals to $100,000, of course. Then we run our algorithm. And finally, we can print out the analyzers related sharp ratio. We can get the normalized annual return. We can get the maximum drawdown and we can get the final capital. In this case, we are dealing with the company's file. So we are dealing with just a few companies and then we are going to test whether our algorithm is going to work fine if we consider all the companies in S&P 500 index. Of course, it is going to take some time to finish with the simulation. Okay, so first of all, let's use the companies. If I save and run the application, let's see whether it is going to work fine or not. The initial capital is $100,000. And of course, there's going to be some problem. And of course, because we have to use datas with index zero and all the other stock related data. Okay. And then there are some minor issue here. This admin period is a function, of course. So we have to use it something like this. And the parameter is going to be the self params period, which is equals to 90. Okay, and finally, I made a minor mistake here because we have a moving average simple and we have a simple moving average. And we have to use the simple moving average indicator, of course. So let's save. And I guess that it is going to work just fine. So if we rerun the application, then the initial capital is $100,000. And of course, it is going to take some time for Python to finish with this simulation. So let's wait for it to finish. 
As you can see, the annualized return is approximately 12%. The maximum drawdown is 25%. The Sharpe ratio is 0.91. And this is the final value of the portfolio. So as you can see, we can make quite a decent profit. Of course, in this case, we are dealing with the first 14 companies within the S&P 500 index. So instead of the companies, we are going to use the companies all and of course because the companies all contains all the stocks in the S&P 500 which means that we have to consider approximately 500 stocks of course the algorithm is going to be way slower so let's rerun the application and let's wait for it to finish execution of course initial capital is a hundred thousand dollars and don't worry it may happen that your computer will run approximately five to ten minutes so let's wait for it to finish okay so we get the result as you can see the sharp ratio of our momentum based approach is approximately 1.2 the annual return is 15 percent which is quite good the maximum drawdown is 22 percent and the capital after the trading strategy of course in this case we are dealing with 10 years because we have started the algorithm at 2010 and we ended the algorithm at 2020 we have managed to end it up with four hundred thousand dollars okay so this momentum based approach is working quite fine this is how we can use exponential regression and momentum in order to build a portfolio in order to build quite a good trading strategy in the coming chapters we are going to talk about how to use time series analysis in order to end up with good trading strategies as well and then we are going to talk about statistical arbitrage and machine learning related approaches thanks for watching